everyone. Welcome back to another Kevin's Creations here on Geektopia Island. I'm Kevin. I'm Cardinal. And today we're bringing you a fun new deck. It's one of the older rulers because I wanted to go back to Divinity, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, it's our girl Brunhild. But before we get into it, we just remind you that we do have a Patreon. The link will be down below. Go check it out. It's got some extra stuff in it. See what you like, see what you don't like. And it really just takes an extra dollar to give us some extra love and support. We'd greatly appreciate it. With that, we're going to get into the deck. And the deck's name is Bring Out Your Dead. King, 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 king. So, if you haven't figured it out, we're reanimating some stuff. Oh, that's, yeah. that's what we're doing. And Brunhild's real good about doing that. So, uh, we're playing Brunhild. So, Brunhild, she is the Divinity Tin, one of the white starter deck rulers from the last sets. And she's got Judgment of 2 white and 2 and energizes for white. So, relatively simple on the front side. And she Judgments into a 12-12 flyer that comes into play and returns a dude from the graveyard to play. And she still has Divinity Tin. Just super solid. That, so. That's what she does. Yeah. Super simple, super easy, and we're done. Yep. So, her runes that I've used, I have the super secret tech for super burning Beast Rush. Oh, yeah. It's really why it's here, and it's a one cost divinity. That's why I needed it. It's Barrier of Faith. It is one white quick cast for divinity one. It's a chance slash rune, but you prevent all damage that would be dealt by chance until the end of turn. So, this is your secret tech against Super Burning Beast Rush by Prisia. Yeah. So, it gives you a way out against that stupid card where you're just like, ah, I take 20, and you're like, oh, no, no, no thanks. thanks. No, go ahead, go away. <laughs> Next up is Power of Immortality. It is a black and one for Divinity 1, quick cast, chant rune. You pay one less place from rune area, so it's one black. And target resonator gains plus four, plus zero, oh, and whenever it's put into a graveyard from the field, put it back into the field, rest it under your control, or under its owner's control. And this card is just too good it's for black. really good. Like, cause you, you throw a dude in the way to block and it comes back rested and does its inner triggers again, and you just get extra value out of it. Yeah. Next up is Invitation of Purgatory. It is two black. Produce a red and a black, search your deck for a card, put it into the graveyard. Then if there's a card named Satan, from God of the Fallen in your removed area, search your deck for a card and put it in the graveyard as well. This is just to help set up for reanimator. That's literally why it's there. No other reason. I mean, you can get Satan and do other stuff with it if you need to, but uh, it's mostly there to set up for reanimation. Yep. As is this next one, Harvesting Season. Uh, black and one, Divinity three. Pay one less to place from a rune area, so one black. Put the top 10 cards in your deck into your graveyard. So you're just setting up your graveyard to reanimate everything. Just know that don't cheat is a card and you can totally lose all value in these cards if they're just like, hey, no. Yeah, cause like, uh oh. It's, it's sad days, but it is what it is. Uh, next up is Whispers of an Angel. It is one white and two, and you pay two less to play this from area. It's got quick cast. And you gain 800 life and you draw a card. So you're just drawing some cards, and you're drawing a card and gaining life, and it helps you just keep going. It's one of the most simpler runes out there, yeah. and it does a lot at the same time. All right, the next uh, resonator, we, or the first resonator we have is a uh, Belthor, the Angel of Treasure. It's a one white and one five five flying. When this card is put in the graveyard from the field, draw a card. Simple as that. It's a very you sacrifice that thing quickly enough to uh, for a block, or even swing in and they block, and you draw a card. We're playing black. We're playing runes. Gotta play Estima. She's, yeah. she's, she's a card. Uh, two black and one for a 7-6 flying resonator. Um, enter, your opponent loses 500 life. If there are three more runes revealed from your rune area, you gain 500 life, so you can easily do that. You can pay four life, draw a card, play this ability only your turn and once per turn. You can pay 10 and your opponent takes five, or loses five life, and then you do this once per turn only on your turn. And she's just there to help you with Satan and just to give you extra that life buffer. Yeah, she's super awesome and super good all the time. The next one is Oborozuki, Caller of the Gods. It's four darkness. It's a 10-10 or 1,000-1,000. Enter. Put two fresh blood counters on this card. If you control four or more runes revealed, then you may put uh, four fresh blood counters on this card. You remove a fresh blood counter and this card gains flying and drain till end of turn. You can tap. Remove two fresh blood counters and then destroy target J slash resonator, which is amazing. Yeah. This card gains plus 10, plus 10, as long as you control 10 or more magic stones. So that's good. They don't have to be specific. They just have to be 10 out there. Yeah. Mostly you're going to want her as one of your reanimate targets if you need to, just to be like, hey, kill that dude, or I need to gain life. Sadly, they rotted drain, so you don't get to just cheat it and get a lot of extra life. Yeah. But it's okay. That's that's still fine, though. Yeah. You still gain 10 life, and that's fantastic. Uh, another good card to have is Blazer. Two red and two black for a 10-10 flyer as well. 
Enter. Target J resonated. Your opponent control loses all abilities until the end of turn, then destroy it. If a J ruler was destroyed this way, your ru the ruler your opponent controls loses all abilities until the Super end of the good. game. So if it kills a J, they split back over with no abilities. Yeah. None. So all the dudes that all the new ones that have Regalia triggers, they don't get those. It doesn't do a whole lot on the Divinity rulers, but it's there to hurt the other ones. Pretty pretty awesome. The next one is Ouroboros, the reincarnating light serpent. It is five light, but I'm probably not gonna be cast for that. It's a 2020. Uh, enter target player become life total becomes two thousand. Yeah, that's it. That's what it's for. It has another ability, but it deals with strangers, and we don't do that. Yep. So no, no but need for that. You reanimate this dude, and you're like, hey, cool, you're at twenty. Or if you're dying, you're just like, cool, back. I'm back at twenty. Thanks, because it's target player. Next up is Satan, God of the Fallen. He is the guy that you go get with Invitation to Darkness, and he says, while you're searching your deck, you may pay a red or a black and reveal this card from your deck. If you do, remove this card with a Fallen King, Fallen Counter on it. He enters. Choose one. If there are 10 or more Fallen Counters, you may choose both instead. Your opponent banished as a Resonator, then you repeat this process until the combined total of Resonators banished this way is equal to or greater than the number of Fallen Counters on this card. Or, put in the number of Resonators whose combined cost is equal to or less than the number of Fallen Counters on this card from your graveyard into the field. So that's probably what you're going to want to do most of the time. I mean, either way is good. Yeah, exactly. But then you ask how he gets Fallen Counters. As long as this card is in your removed area with one or more Fallen Counter on it, it gains whenever an effect you control or cost causes you to lose life. If this card is in your removed area, put a Fallen Counter on it. And you may play this card from your removed area. If you do, it enters with X Fallen Counters, where X equals the number of Fallen Counters that were on it in your removed area. So, so. you lose life from Estima and all that kind of silly stuff, and you just get to put counters on this card over and over and over and then once it comes into play you get to do free stuff i'm surprised that satan doesn't have a backside where it just continues with text <laughs> like yeah war and peace for he, force of will he does have a lot of text yeah. but he's really strong if he gets to be used yeah it's just that's how good he is it's really ridiculous the next one we haven't seen this one in a while athena sealed god of the runes it's two darkness and three it's a 12 10 enter your opponent banishes a resonator if they don't they banish a magic magic stone pretty good when this card is put in the graveyard from the field, your opponent banishes a non-J ruler entity. So, oh, yeah. killing dudes. Maybe two stones if possible. Tap. Uh, resonate as your opponent's control get minus 200, minus 200 until end of turn. If there are four more runes, it's minus 400, minus 400 instead. Really just a powerful card. Yeah, constantly. so if you reanimate her, then you get to be like, hey, cool. Kill some stones. Yep. Kill some dudes. I don't care either way. Yep. And then hopefully you reanimate this guy first, because he literally clears the way for you. Belial, the evil from the scriptures, he is three black and three for a 12-12 flyer. You're probably not playing him for that. Yep. Um, if your life total is 1,000 or less, this card costs three less. And enters, you destroy all non-fallen angel resonators. Whenever a resonator is put into a graveyard from the field, this card deals 100 damage to your opponent for Super each good. one. So if you have extra dudes that are not fallen angels, they all die. Your opponent's dudes all die. They take a lot of damage. Totally. And the first spell is Look of Corruption, because why not? So one darkness chant, look at your opponent's hand, card a four or less, uh, and they discard it. And if you play the Awakening, which is two uh, a black and a white, or a black and a colorless, you look a five or more and grab that and they discard it too. Just simple as that, but mainly you just want to be like, turn one and get rid of your Regalia. Yeah, it gets rid of everything. Yes. Also, to help with Regalias, because you don't have any other way answers them, is Seal of Lineth. Is one white. Enter. It's an addition. Remove target non J ruler, non magic stone entity your opponent controls from the game. Whenever this card leaves the field, put a card from the removed area by this card back into play. So, this is your way to remove the, the regalia so that way they don't get them. Yeah. It's a very, very powerful spell for one white. It's, it's insanely good. Yeah. The next one is Lie of the Sacred Spirit. That's a one drop uh, quick cast. It's a sword art. Choose one. If you control Lars and I, the Sacred Spirit, you may choose both instead, which you will not. Remove target resonator with target uh, 900 attack or more from the game, which is really good for like one for a quick yeah. cast. That or search your deck for a five hero resonator, reveal it, and put it in your hand. So you're just removing dudes. Yeah, you're just removing dudes with this card because almost every dude that's like big right now can get over 900. And you're just like, cool, get out of my game. Or thanks. Or even with Persia, if there's so too many counters and you already board wipe and they're like play this hasty dude you're like no yeah. get out of here thanks 
Also to help remove dudes is Blade of Faith. Yeah. It is one white for a master rune. It's the chant master rune, so she can play it in her main deck. Yep. And I have I have them in there because it's it's one white remove target J or sorry remove target resonator from the game. Yeah. For one white, it's doesn't have quick cast, but it's still one white to remove that dude. Yeah. Remember when this card was powerful? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it still is, but now there's like two drops that can get rid of J rollers. So. Yeah. It yeah it's kind of ridiculous now, but this card's still very very strong. Very very. All right, I'll let you talk about the main deck. All right, so our main deck to re main card in the deck to re reanimate stuff is Dance of the Shadows. It is a black and three. It is a mage art. It's got quick cast and remnant, but mage art doesn't matter. Uh, you put target resonator from your graveyard into the field. At the next end of turn, remove it from the game. So it's a quick cast, so you can bring turn any of these big dudes at any time, yep. which is really helpful. So when they're like attack with all these dudes, you're like Belial, not kill all your dudes. Yeah. And the thing about this card with being quick cast, if you do it right, you can do it at the end of their end turn, so that way you get to keep that dude for the whole turn on your turn. Yep. If that makes sense. Um, because it that's the way it, re it reads, because it's in the next end of turn, and all those trigger at the start of yeah. that phase. So near the end of it, you're just like, cool, reanimate this dude, I get to have him on untap, so I get to swing with him, and then he gets removed. Yep. That's However... It also works really well with Power of Immortality. So if you're like, Cole, return this dude to block. My dude's gonna die, Power of Immortality him. He comes back and he's a fresh new creature then. So you get to keep it. Yep, you just get to straight up keep it. So done. And if that's on an Athenia, then they either just lost two dudes or <laughs> lost two stones. Or even three, because yeah, because she comes into play, they do it. She dies, remove another one, Power oh, yeah. of Immortality, come back do it again. Yeah, so, so there's potential to then to lose like three stones if you hit an Athenia with both. Yeah. And it's kind of disgusting. Very disgusting. And of course, Remnant means you can cast it again. You just have to exile it from the graveyard. Yeah, sweet. So super good, super awesome. And like you said, that's the mastering of the stack. Techni technicality is just like beginning of instep. There's a little thing and then bam. Yeah, do it. Also, this card can be put into the graveyard with inv Invitation of, to Purgatory because it says go get a card. Yeah. It doesn't care what card, so you just go put this in there if you need to reanimate spell. You're just like, cool, put this in there and put Belial in there. And then I'll be like, hey, I always have it. Yeah, that's super good. All right, of course, the next one is Balmung. It's a two white and two. Destroy all arrested resonators. Thanks. So if you survive the Prissia turn where they attack hard out, you're just like, cool, kill your dudes. Thanks. Just do doing all that. And the fact that you know people are going to be attacking, and there's not really much what they call vigilance or... Is there a keyword? There's no such thing? And no. Of course well. So there you go. They're always going to be tapping, so have fun with that. And then that is it for the deck. The stones are really simple. We have five light magic stones. We have some magic stones of the Scorch Bales, which is the red-black dual stone. And then we have one darkness magic stone. And that's really it for the deck. Yeah. It's very straightforward. It's very simple, because you're just reanimating big dudes. You're not going to be doing a whole lot other than that. Yeah. And all your big dudes should make a very big impact on the game. <laughs> but if you want to see the deck, the deck list will be down below. Go check it out and leave a like and a comment and let us know. See y'all again next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Also, guys, I just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to keep up to date on all our future content, make sure you click that bell. It will give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you very you much. much. We love you.